For week six, we'll be doing Chinese kites, and this will conclude the six weeks that we do drawing for cycle one. So for the final drawing, we will incorporate several of the ideas from the first five weeks into one complete drawing at the end. To begin with, we're going to be doing a mirror image drawing. And on the blog, you'll see that there's a butterfly options like this, but there's also a dragon kite and a bird kite for students to choose from. We want students to remember back to what they did when they did their other mirror image drawing of the vase. And we want to study what's going on on this side and then draw it accurately in the same on this side. There's also left-handed options for students who are lefties so that they aren't covering up the image with their hand as they draw. It makes it quite a bit easier. So I want to study all the curves and the lines and the shapes happening and mimic them on the other side. We also want to use our measuring techniques, whether you're using your thumb and finger to measure the length or your pencil. But either way, we want to really focus on those same techniques that we learned in week two to get an accurate drawing. So I can do lots of marks on the paper in order to double check the length of my shapes. I can also do dots on the opposite side to mark where things will go. And that gives me a precise um, place to begin and end when I do that. Once we have the mirror image of the kite finished, then we're gonna be talking about one point perspective again. We're gonna start with a horizon line up near the top of the page. So use your ruler to lay it across but don't do the line across the kite. The line will disappear as it's behind that image. We're also going to be doing a really little tiny person, and that's because our perspective is up here in the sky, close to the kite, and we're gonna be looking down towards the earth. So we'll be using the one point perspective to draw the kite string going down to this little guy's hand. The vanishing point will be his hand, and the kite string will get smaller and smaller as it goes towards his hand. So you can use your ruler to line up from the kite to that point and then do straight lines showing how the string is bigger close to us, but the string gets so, so tiny as it goes away from us in space. And now we can include some abstract or um, other designs in the kite itself. So we want to use our oils and use things like circles and some maybe filled in dots. Um, any of the oils, curved lines, straight lines, angled lines, whatever we want to do. And we'll do a mirror image of that abstract design on the other side as well. So once your students have their um, kite done, then they can add some things to the landscape if they like. They can add really, really small trees. Remember, we're looking up here, so everything far away from us would be very, very tiny. They can add whatever they want to the kite to complete that. And then if there's time, they can use their colored pencils to begin to color in the kite first and then add any other designs that they wish.